Yeah, that five foot brother. real quick and then we're gonna get this guy back in the water but what a beautiful triple tail this is an amazing eating fish now we got a whole show to shoot and I want to get this guy back in but if you ever hit a chance to eat one of these they're fantastic all right we got we're gonna go over some tools here for you guys uh, really important surf fishing tools number one paramount to your success out here is gonna be having a strong pliers. Now, this, these are some pliers that we use in our freshwater fishing tackle kit. And we like these out here uh, because you've got uh, the line cutter here, the wire cutter for your leaders, a crimper when you're crimping down for making leaders, as well as a hook remover. And so these are just super easy. They're really versatile, but you know what? They are stainless steel. They're gonna rust. They're not ideal for salt water. And so you might wanna invest in some pretty expensive ones. Otherwise, you know, you can get a $5, $6 pair like this um, and they work fantastic out here. Second, you gotta have a fillet knife and this is gonna enable you to cut your cut bait as well as, you know, trim down some shrimp um, or cut up your squid so you can get strips out. And so these are really important for just your bait management, but also important if you catch anything out here, you're gonna wanna fillet it quickly and gut it at least uh, before you get home because it's so hot out here, the water's so warm. So to have fresh fillets, if you are keeping fish, you wanna have a fillet knife on hand while you're out on the water. Lastly, we've got some bolt cutters here and you know, not everybody needs these. If you're fishing in Florida, you gotta have them on you but these are for shark waters, right? If we catch a big shark or any shark that's in the kind of exotic or um, you know, no-go species list in group two or group three down here in Florida, uh, we gotta be able to cut the leader and get that shark back out, not even taking it out of the water. So this is a regulatory precaution as well as a safety precaution. It's just really helpful when you got those big shark on um, and you gotta get that hook removed. You can't really get in there and you're just gonna have to cut the line. So just a pair of typical bolt cutters from your hardware store. These two must have, this one, if you're in Florida, must have. Otherwise, you know, if you're going for a shark, you should have it on you. All right, last on your list of gear that you need is a classic rag, washcloth, whatever. It's super important because you're gonna get real slimy with the bait, you're gonna get real slimy handling the fish and your gear is gonna get all messed up. So it's really easy to just have one of these to clean your hands off when you're dealing with all sorts of stuff, right? Um, and what we wanna cover with bait is the classic bait that you're gonna get at your local tackle shop or a Walmart or a sporting goods store somewhere in the coastal region that you're fishing. This is gonna typically be frozen bait and every once in a while you're gonna get some live bait as well. For frozen bait, you know, these are specific to the Gulf Coast and probably the Southeastern US, but they're interchangeable with so many other things, right? We're gonna talk about a big cut mullet, right? That's just bunker on the East Coast, right? Um, squid's gonna be the same everywhere. These little finger mullets, they're gonna be, you know, maybe uh, green backs, also known as pilchers or pinfish or whatever, you know, smaller uh, bait fish size thing. And then shrimp, shrimp's classic everywhere, right? And so I'm gonna show you guys how to cut these up, get them rigged up as well as, you know, how to rig up maybe a live bait, um, smaller fish, right? That's just great for, you know, the near shore stuff. So we're gonna start cutting these up for you guys and showing you how to get them on the hooks. All right, we're gonna show you 
guys how we're reading the beach and how we are putting our rigs and using our lures in relation to the different forms of structure on the beach. So the most simple concept that I'm gonna show you when I get out there is there's typically a first trough, which is gonna be two to three feet high. Um, that's gonna dip down right here, right where the waves crash in. Then there's gonna be a sandbar. And then after that sandbar, there's either gonna be a second trough and a second sandbar or a second trough some rocks or just a steady decline, right? And what we're working with here is we have our first trough, we've got our sandbar, then we have a second trough and a line of rocks. And now you can see this trough and the sandbar go into a point over here. This point juts out, meaning that the sandbar comes in towards the shore, the trough ends and funnels out. So why we're positioned right here is because you want to be you want to have access to this first trough it's a highway for bait fish and most of the game fish we're chasing after and if it goes into a point like the point that we're seeing right here all the bait fish get corralled right at this ending now the double bonus here is that we have a set of rocks out after the sandbar in between that second trough. So the sandbar, second trough, rocks. That's an ideal location to get our bigger baits, our bigger shark baits out there to go catch some really big fish right off the beach. So the strategy is gonna be right here on this first trough, running our baits that are for those two to three feet long fish and under. So our snook, our drum, our smaller shark, our sea trout, our whiting slash croaker is what they call them. Um, and that's all gonna happen right here, honestly, just five feet out from us. And then with our bigger rigs, we're gonna walk out there. You're gonna see where that sandbar is. And I'm gonna be casting out, trying to get right in between the sandbar and the rocks in that second trough at the deepest point in that trough. That's where most of the fish are gonna be holding. All right, I'm gonna walk you guys through the fish finder rig. This should be your go-to when you're out here. It's super versatile. It allows the fish to take it directly to your line without lifting up the weight. Um, and it's great for really, you know, big cut baits, um, any sort of, you know, frozen baits, smelly baits, really powerful stuff here. Um, and you've got different sizes of weights. These weights can go with the different hook combinations. These are just the most common setup in terms of like your pyramid sinker with a certain style hook and a certain style bait. So when you're going for the bigger toothy critters, you want a longer leader and you're going to use that bigger cut bait. You're going to have a bigger hook. So the five odd uh, circle hook and the four ounce weight and, you know, moving down to maybe kind of like a snook red drum kind of rig, you're going to have like a cut mullet. Um, and that's going to be up on that like three ounce pyramid sinker and a three odd J hook. And then you got your smaller rigs where you know you got your two ounce and your one ounce um, with squid and shrimp. The squid's gonna be with that uh, wide gap hook. It just elongates the squid strip better. And then you've got your, your uh, classic frozen shrimp on a little one aught circle hook. And so all of these can be interchanged. I just want you to take a mental map of how I'm laying these baits with these hooks and these weight sizes, because this is generally the combination that you're gonna be working with. You can put the shrimp on a four ounce weight when you need to and the conditions are rough. You can run cut bait on a two ounce, right? Uh, but this is the most common combination that you should be using down here when you're surf fishing. All right, so next up on your rigs are the ready rigs. And while I think you should be using the fish finder rigs uh, the majority of your time, the ready rigs serve as your most convenient option. So these are great. If you're just getting started, you should start with these. If you've never been surf fishing before, or if you're taking kids out, family members, you got a big group, right? These will allow you to get, um, you know, the smaller profile baits like squid and shrimp out deeper because the weights are secured onto the leader itself, which will just improve your casting distance and really get them out there. Now you're gonna lose the sensitivity and the feel of a fish finder rig, but these are great because they're easy. They work effectively. You can change out any hook size you want. Simple, done deal. So use these first if it's your first time. Use them with kids and use them with family. So here are a couple specialty rigs that we should walk through as well. We've got the Pompano rig, uh, which is great for, you guessed it, Pompano, right? But really it's a focus of going after the smaller surf species, you know, maybe the size of your hand, 
um, up to maybe about, you know, your arm here. And that includes sheep's head and even the, you know, the croaker and the whiting and the sea trout and so on and so forth. Right here, right up next to the surf here, uh, right on the edge. And so this is going to just bounce right along the bottom and you're going to get this bait just right up there in the surf itself, right? And it's just a fantastic setup for targeting even bait fish too. If you're trying to get some bigger cut bait uh, to throw on your fish finder rig, it's just a great setup to get out there and start catching those fish, you know, kind of smaller end of the spectrum. Uh, and then we've got the bottom rig. It's also called an Old Dominion rig. And I, I have one already on here, but uh, I know this one's a little complicated for a lot of folks, but what I'm doing is I'm taking um, a little bit of monofilament or fluorocarbon. I'm tying it onto my hook, maybe, you know, five or six inches. And then I'm just doing like a little loop. I'm just taking a loop and just doubling it over. Um, and that's gonna be your little leader end. You can see we already have this side hooked up on the bottom here. And then on the top, all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take this loop, you're gonna run it through the tag end of the bottom rig. You're gonna bring it back over and send your hook through. And so I just tie these on with some mono or fluorocarbon. You can get them, they're called snells. Uh, you can get them pre-snelled. Um, and all you do is, right, you wet through it and then you pull the line down and it just cinches right on there. Um, and so these little separators are gonna keep your dual bait separated and then your leader is going to keep, you know, the bait separated from the wire section to give it more of a finesse approach. Um, and this is a bottom rig for rocky areas, uh, anything with, you know, maybe some coral, things like that, that you're gonna get kind of trapped in. It's really popular on the, you know, northern, northeastern, east coast in California, where they have those really rocky bottoms. So if that's you, you're gonna get snagged all the time with that fish finder rig. Um, it's gonna be challenging if you can't find a soft sandy spot. This is a great option when you're trying to surf fish, but you know, there's some obstructions in the way. This is just gonna bounce along the bottom. You can change whatever pyramid sinker you want weight wise here. Um, and the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get caught here. Your, bait, your, your weight's gonna knock around a little bit and you're just gonna tug it free. And most of the time it comes on through. If not, you know, you're gonna lose a weight, um, but you're not gonna lose the fish. All right, so to cast, you know, we're using a bigger rod. We got a big butt here. What we're trying to do is get this bait out as far as we can without actually losing it, right? And that's challenging. We've got a four ounce sinker here, nice bit of cut bait and a thread fit here. We're going for snook. And what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to get it launched as far as I can without losing the bait. We wanna get a big arching motion. It's gonna be over our shoulder. It's gonna be slowly up and over. It's not gonna be a whip. It's not gonna be a side. Over. I'm going to show you real quick. Over our shoulder, on back, on the bail. All right, we're going to talk about drag real quick, and this is super important. When we're reeling in the fish and things like that, we're going to keep keep it kind of midway there. But when we're keeping our rods out here. With the lines in the water, with the bait in the water, what we want to do is keep that drag to the lightest possible if we're going for these bigger fish. This is on this cut bait, these cut baits, right? So we want, we want that drag to be nice and loose so that when they take it, they can go and run with it. If we get a four, four or five foot shark on here, we want to let him run with it, and we're going to set the hook after he's burned out some energy, right? So we're keeping these things to the point where, you know, you can pull it like this, right? Then once you get it, before you set the hook, you gotta come over and you gotta turn your drag back. Now you don't wanna tighten it all the way to the top where you can't pull it at all. But you wanna bring it back to like here where it's still pulling drag, but it's a little bit tougher so you can kinda reel that back when you go. All these bigger ones here, they're gonna have looser drags on them, right? Um, and they're gonna be sitting here in the water, right? We're gonna get that hit, it's gonna be thump, thump, thump. We're gonna go over to set the hook after they have ran. We're gonna turn that drag up a bit, right? Not all the way up, but to right about there, right? When you get a bite, walk up and remove the rod from the rod holder. Now do this gently, and when it's a larger fish, really peeling drag, let that thing run for like 30 seconds. Now your drag settings are really loose because we kept them loose, right, for these bigger fish. When that fish slows down, you want to start turning your drag tighter, turn it to the right one to two times, 
to get that drag tight enough so you can set the hook. When you set the hook, you're gonna do kind of like a 45 degree strike on the rod, just lifting it up from waist height up towards your shoulder, uh, really pulling hard on that to set that hook in there. Now, after that hook, hook set, you're gonna probably get a fish that's gonna run. Uh, let it take some line. If it starts running, just let your drag system do its work and let that fish peel off. When that line stops feeding out, um, start reeling back, right? You're gonna start pushing against the fish and reeling it in when it slows down and then when it goes off to take another run, just let your drag system do the work. Once you get to near shore, you wanna wade into the water a bit and you're gonna to wanna to land that fish by grabbing the leader and pulling the leader in. Um, if you grab the fish in the water, you're gonna lose it, so you wanna pull that thing right onto shore through the leader. See if we can get a couple more of these bad boys on. We had that five foot brother of his the other day. Couldn't seem to land him, but we're gonna try again. We'll catch these all day. All right, squid is probably the most universal and common surf fishing bait. This is gonna be available all through the West Coast, the East Coast, the Gulf. And this is what you wanna be using for, you know, kind of that smaller to mid-sized species that's gonna be more of a target game fish. So that's gonna be, you know, your croaker, your spotted uh, sea trout or weak fish, uh, potentially snook and drum, um, everything that's kind of under 24 inches, squid's probably the way to go. and. You know, there's, it's, it's a little bit complicated and a little bit daunting when you first see it, right? Uh, but what we want is thin little strips, little triangular strips, right? We're not worried about all this extra junk. Uh, so we're just gonna pull this right off, right? We don't need this. This isn't gonna be helpful. Um, it's gonna fall off. You can use it if you start running low on bait, but what you really want are thin triangular strips. This is what we're looking for. We want to turn these into triangular strips. This is what we're looking for. And we're going to put these on. I like to put these on the wide gap hooks. They're smaller. And they also have this gap here so that you can easily double hook them, widen them out and let them flutter in the water, just like that, right? Now shrimp is gonna be your second most common bait. And I like to do this a couple different ways, right? Let's imagine that this is a live shrimp. We don't have any today, but let's imagine it is. I like to use this one-aught octopus hook and I go right back here through this tail and I pierce that through. It's gonna be real firm when it's a live shrimp. And it's gonna hold it right there. It's a big clean gap for that fish to take it in. And it lets these, you know, little tiny legs move in action and he's gonna be fighting like that, right? That's how I would do it with a live shrimp. Now, you're typically gonna be using frozen shrimp. So what I like to do is rig this up on heavier weights, right? And when you're gonna be rigging up shrimp, you don't want to just go through the tail, um, especially with a frozen shrimp. You're going you're gonna to get your pants taken down, right? You're going to lose the shrimp. It's just going to be the tail end. So what we like to do is we like to pierce through here where it's rougher and then pierce through here again and spread this out on the J hook. Now you can also take that head off because it's going to come off at some point and throw that down on the end. It kind of clinches the bait down and you got kind of a big tasty meal here. Now it's not the most effective way to display like a live shrimp. It's not gonna be lively, but it's gonna stay on. And that's your biggest battle is keeping your bait on while your rigs are out waiting for a fish. Moving on to the finger sized mullets. Uh, these can also be, you know, any smaller bait fish in that kind of five to six inch bait profile. You can do them a couple different ways. 
We don't want to just throw the whole thing on because it's frozen, it's dead. We want it to get smelling a little bit. So even if we're going to go a little bit bigger, let's say we throw the whole thing on here. I like to at least cut off the tail, right? And let's just use this one-aught octopus hook. You can go right here through the eyes and this is gonna hold, it's got a good clearing, right? And you wanna cut that tail because you want the blood and the gunk and the smell to be coming out of it, right? Super easy. Now what you can also do, and let's use the J-hook for this, is you can get multiple pieces on here and really bunch it up. And this is great if you're kind of going for a shark or, you know, some sort of a larger species um, in that three to four foot range. Mullet's great for that. You can just get it all on the hook. I'd even kind of cut this down a little bit, right? And we're just trying to get a big pile on here right just like that that's a great big ball of bait but you're typically going to go half and half typically they're going to go and hook it through the head like i did earlier or hook it through the tail right here right and that's going to be your bait this is good for that kind of you know foot and a half to two foot long species. It weeds through some of the smaller fish and it gives an ample meal to attract some of the, you know, two to three foot shark, the larger snook, uh, red drum, things like that, right? Now, if you're on the beach with live bait, you gotta keep them cool and you gotta oxygenate that bait, right? And so we've got, if you were to take any live shrimp or live pinfish, we've got some pinfish in here. We've got an aerator going, it's in a cool cooler. These guys have been in here now for about four hours and not a single one has died. It's really important to keep them cool. You don't want to just have them in a bait bucket. You want them in a cooler with water and an aerator, right? And this aerator right here is just well down here. They're like 25 bucks, right? Um, and what I'll do with these live bait is we want to keep them active in the water, um, but we also want to keep our bait on, right? Uh, so what I'll do is I'll take these one-aught circle hooks. Whoop. Lost in there. And I'm gonna pierce them right through the back of the tail here. Just like that. And that's gonna let this fish woundedly swim around, be frantic, keep that vibrating motion up, as well as stay secure on the line. Um, and it's just, it's just probably the most effective way to really bait a live bait critter like this. You, you can do it with uh, pilchers or greenbacks, um, as well as other smaller, you know, two to four inch live bait fish. And these you're just going to cast right here in the shallows. Now, the final and most important is going to be your cut bait. And this is what you're going to use predominantly fishing on your bigger rods and reels uh, to target bigger shark, uh, bigger striped bass. If you're up on the east coast or west coast, your drum, your snook, all of those fish that could potentially get over that two to three foot mark. Everything else we've covered here is kind of that bait for that under two foot fish. This is for everything over. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to cut two inch wide pieces um, one to two inch wide pieces, um, and, and they're gonna be about an inch or so thick, right? And so we'll start with the tail. The tail, you're gonna leave a little bit longer of a piece, maybe like a three inch piece, just because it's more narrow, there's less meat on it. Um, so it's gonna look a little bit more like this but the rest of them are gonna be about two inches uh, to an inch. Right, and you just keep going up all the way to the head and then you can keep the head too. Now, with these pieces, right, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to get right beneath the back here. You take that five-aught circle hook 
and you pierce it down. You push it through the back and you break out on the other end. Right through the back there. There we go. Just like that. Right underneath the dorsal fin. It's got a good about a half an inch clearing right there. Um, it's gonna let you set the hook right on the fish and it's still gonna hold really well. So this is what we're gonna be predominantly using today. When we're out here trying to catch these bigger shark and bigger snook, they're gonna be on our bigger rods. And then our smaller rods are gonna have a mixture of these baits for under two, two foot fish so that we can get a good smackling of different species. 